Isaiah chapter 9 verses 2 to 7. The people who walk in darkness will see a great light. For those who live in a land of deep darkness, a light will shine. You will enlarge the nation of Israel and its people will rejoice. They will rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest and like warriors dividing the plunder. For you will break the yoke of their slavery and lift the heavy burden from their shoulders. You will break the oppressor's rod, just as you did when you destroyed the army of Midian. The boots of the warrior and the uniforms bloodstained by war will all be burned. They will be fuel for the fire. For a child is born to us, a son is given to us. The government will rest on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His government and its peace will never end. He will rule with fairness and justice from the throne of his ancestor David for all eternity. The passionate commitment of the Lord of Heaven's armies will make this happen.
In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. And in the same region there were shepherds out in the field keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them.
You have multiplied the nations. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as the joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar against their shoulders, the, uh, the rod of their oppressor. You have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulder, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Now the scripture from Luke. In these days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This is the first registration and was taken from Quirinius was governor of Syria. All, all, all went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the end. In the region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping flock over their flocks by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone all around, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I bring you good news of great joy for all people. To you in this day in the city of David, is a savior, Christ the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in swaddling clothes and laying in a manger. And suddenly there was the angels, a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and singing, glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. The reading of God's word for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our message title this evening is One Life Changing Word. Bow with me. Gracious and awesome God, we thank you for your only Son, Jesus, as we come to celebrate his birth. May we learn that one life-changing word and carry it in our hearts as we go forward in this world, being in service and love to you. In Jesus' most precious name we pray, amen. One of the most popular and heartwarming stories ever told is Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol. This story describes the lonely and mislived life of Ebenezer Scrooge. The story opens on a bleak, cold Christmas Eve in London, seven years after the death of Scrooge's business partner, Jacob Martin. Scrooge, an aging miser, disliked Christmas and refused a dinner invitation from his nephew, Fred. He also turned away two men who were, who were seeking a donation from him to provide food and heat for the poor, and only grudgingly allowed his overworked, underpaid clerk, Bob Cratchit, Christmas Day off with pay. 
that night Scrooge is visited at home by Marley's ghost who wanders the earth weighed down by heavy chains and money boxes forged during a lifetime of greed and selfishness. Marley tells Scrooge that he had a single chance to avoid the same fate he's experiencing. He will be visited by three spirits and he must listen to them or be cursed and carry much heavier chains of his own. The first spirit, the ghost of Christmas past, takes Scrooge to Christmas scenes of Scrooge's boyhood. The scenes reveal Scrooge's lonely childhood at boarding school, his relationship with his beloved sister, Fan, and a Christmas party hosted by his first employer, Mr. Fizzywig, who treated him like a son. Scrooge's neglected fiance, Bella, is shown ending their relationship as she realizes he will never love her as much as he loves money. Finally, they visit a now married Bella with her large happy family on the Christmas Eve that Marley died. Scrooge was upset by hearing Bella's description of the man that he had become and demands that the ghost remove him from the house. The second spirit, the ghost of Christmas present, <coughs> takes, <coughs> takes Scrooge to Fred's Christmas party. A major part of this chapter takes up with Cratchit's family feast and introduces his youngest son, Tiny Tim, a happy boy who is seriously ill. The spirit informs Scrooge that Tiny Tim will die unless the course of events change. The third spirit, the ghost of Christmas yet to come, shows Scrooge on Christmas Day in the future. Bob Cratchit and his family are mourning the death of Tiny Tim. The ghost then allows Scrooge to see an neglected grave with a tombstone bearing Scrooge's own name on it. Sobbing, Scrooge pledges to change his ways, and he does. Scrooge awakes on Christmas morning a changed man. He makes large donations to the charity he rejected the previous day. Anonymously, he sends a large turkey to the Cratchit home for Christmas dinner and spends the afternoon with Fred's family. The following day, he gives Cratchit an increase in pay and begins to become a father figure to Tiny Tim. <coughs> After that unforgettable night, Scrooge is transformed into a kinder, gentler man who becomes a model of generosity. He becomes a changed man. In the wonderful Christmas show presented each year at Rockefeller Center, there is a scene acted from a Christmas carol. It seems that when the Cratchit family received the wonderful gift of a prize turkey that Christmas, only Tiny Tim offered an explanation of who could have possibly sent the turkey. When he says the name Mrs. Scro Mr. Scrooge, his mother says, why would Mr. Scrooge lose his sense and do something like this. Tiny Tim replies with one word, Christmas. That one word says it all, Christmas. John the Baptist knew the truth of that word even if never in his life did he utter it once. Christmas explains how stingy people can become generous. Tired people become energized. Lonely people can feel loved. That is why we look forward to the beautiful time of the year with such anticipation. Christmas. It's a word that carries with it hope, peace, joy, and above all, love. No wonder that we greet Christmas Eve with such anticipation. 
in our minds and hearts, we are transformed to visions of the kind of world this can yet be. And we are transformed in our minds to the kind of people we can yet be. Do you doubt that people can experience the kind of change in their lives, the vision of Christmas evokes? I read about a Baptist pastor who tells about a real man who experienced the same kind of transformation as the fictional Ebenezer Scrooge. His name was John D. Rockefeller Sr. Do you recognize that name? I bet you do. His name is synonymous with the thought of great wealth. Rockefeller was born in 1839 and became a millionaire at the age of 33. This was in the day when $1 million was an, an astounding amount of money. Rockefeller had a deeply religious upbringing, but as a young man, he seemed to have only one obsession, the accumulation of great wealth. At the age of 43, he owned and ran the largest company in the world, the Standard Oil Company. He controlled 90% of the oil in the United States. By the age of 53, John D. Rockefeller was a billionaire, the only one in the world. Someone computed what $1 billion in the 1890s would be worth in today's dollars. They came up with an astronomical sum of $336 billion, making John D. Rockefeller the richest man in financial terms that has ever lived. All this happened before he was 53 years old. Then he developed a disease alopeciotia that caused all oh, his hair to fall out. His eyelashes and his eyebrows disappeared and he became skin and bone. He could digest only milk and crackers because of the stomach ailment and couldn't sleep at night. He had the best doctors in the world. They told him that he would not live one more year. Then one sleepless night, John D. Rockefeller came to his senses and realized that he could not take one dime with him into the next world. Since he knew he couldn't take his money with him, he started giving it away. He did wonderful things with his wealth. He helped churches and needy people. He began the University of Chicago and Rockefeller University as well as a university in the Philippines. He began the foundation, was instrumental, the Rockefeller Foundation was instrumental in the discovery of penicillin, the most significant medical discovery of all times in the eradication of hookworm and yellow fever. At that point in his life, Rockefeller began to change. He began he became able to eat normal food. He started sleeping. He also made a profession of faith and was baptized in a Northern Baptist church. He attended church every Sunday, and he even taught a Sunday school class until he died. After having been told he would never see his 54th birthday, John D. Rockefeller, lived to be 97 years old. Such transformations are possible. Christmas. Such transformations are possible for individuals. Such transformations are also possible for a society. H.G. Wells once wrote a story entitled In the Day of the Comet. It is a science fiction fantasy in which a mysterious green vapor of unknown origin descends from the clouds and covers the earth. The vapor has the immediate effect of putting all the earth's people into a deep sleep for three days. When they finally awake, 
the inner nature is radically transformed. Petty quarreling began, begins to end. Instead of seeking fame, power, and wealth, the people of the world seek to serve one another. Love, kindness, and generosity become more important than greed or success. In short, the perfect society emerges, a society of brotherhood in which the dignity of every human being is honored. The prophet Isaiah looked forward to that kind of day when in his words, the wolves shall dwell with the lamb and the leopard shall lie down with the goat and the calf and the lion and the fatling together and a little bull and a little child shall lead them. Of course, Isaiah was not anticipating a, gray, a green vapor that would come down out of the clouds. He was prophesizing a shoot from the stem of Jesse. That is Isaiah's way of saying that there was a Messiah coming who would establish a new world order, who would bring into being a new kingdom in which love is more important than power and service is more important than domination. In our lesson for today, from Isaiah, the prophet puts it this way, for to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Or as Luke puts it in today's Gospel, and there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flock by night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good tidings of great joy for all people. Today in the city of David, a Savior, Christ the Lord, has been born. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in clothes and laying in the manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angels, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. Christmas. One magnificent word, but it contains all of humanity's highest hope and dream. There's a beautiful story that carries a message in it. A young couple began their marriage full of hope and anticipation. They were happy with good jobs, a nice home, and a loving relationship. In time, they celebrated the birth of their first child. Life seemed rich and complete. They were a beautiful family. Then the unthinkable happened. The beautiful baby who had filled their lives with such joy died. Their lives, once so joyful and rich, became empty and painful. It all seemed hopeless until a simple knock on the door changed their lives forever. There at the door stood a native man holding a small baby. He reached forward, handing the child to the couple. Here, this baby is for you, he said, and then he left. It was an unspeakable gift. Young native mother had given her own baby to fill the lives of a grieving couple. Native people in that part of the world call it custom adoption. In the same way, one sacred night, God walked down from his celestial throne into a dark and broken world with a baby in his hand. Here, this baby is for you, he said. He said to all who would open their hearts to him, Christmas, one magnificent word, but it will change your life if you let the baby into your heart. Praise be to God. Amen.
As we go from our worship this night, may the joy of the angels sing in our voices. May the hope of the shepherds enliven our minds. May the strong faith of Mary strengthen our spirits. And may the love of the child shine in our hearts. God's blessing be upon you all this holy night and bring you peace. Amen. Thank you.